Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we'll see how to create some macros for your Call of Cthulhu games in Roll20. Specifically, we'll see how to have them make a mystery roll so they don't know exactly what they're rolling for, we'll see how to have them roll on a table of madness entries, and we'll also see how to have them generate luck for the start of your adventure. And for those of you with pro accounts, I'm going to show you how to use two mods, the recursive table mod and chat set Atra, to automatically add that luck to your player's character sheet and to be able to do die rolls within your rollable table entries. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So a little bit of background on this one. Earlier this month, I ran my players through the Call of Cthulhu scenario, the Saturnine Chalice, and there's a whole review video of it over on my Patreon page if you want to check that out. But when I was prepping the adventure, I realized there were a handful of things I wanted to automate. There are times when the module has the players do a spot hidden check. And I didn't necessarily want the players to know they were making spot hidden checks because if they make a roll and they fail it, then they realize, oh shoot, we missed something here, you know, and I, I didn't want them to have that. So the first macro that we're going to look at is a mystery roll macro so the player can make a roll, but they don't know what skill it's being applied to. So the first thing that we're going to need for our mystery roll is the actual die roll itself. Call of Cthulhu does everything based off of a D100. So what I'm going to do here is put in a pair of open double brackets, and I'm going to say 1D100. And then if we copy this and run it in chat, we can see I rolled a D100 and I got a 33. Fantastic. But I want to wrap that in a template so that it looks nice and it looks like the other roles that natively come from the Call of Cthulhu character sheet. And what I want it to do is I want it to look like this. So what I'm going to do is paste in some code and then explain what that code does. All right, so I've pasted in my code here. And so this first part, template Call of Cthulhu, that's defining what the role looks like. It's this black box with the gold border and the gold text. The name, what is happening, is this text that shows up in gray that's got kind of a little bit of extra spacing between each letter. And then the title is Mystery Roll, which is this right here. Now, we also want the die roll to show up. And for that, we're going to put that 1D100 that we created there inside of its own set of double curly braces here. It's going to look like this. Roll equals 1D100. And then we close the curly braces. Now, if I copy that, and run it, there we go, what is happening? That's our mystery roll. So now I can just go over to my macros collection and you can see I've already placed that code inside of a macro called mystery roll. And I'm also setting it up to be a token action so that when my players click on their token, they get the mystery roll button show up in the top of the screen. Uh, incidentally, you do also wanna make sure that this is visible to all players. That's what's gonna give everybody permission in order to use it. But now, with that done, my players can click on their token at any time I want them to make a mystery roll, and there we go, they've done that. Now in any Call of Cthulhu scenario, it's pretty much a given that one or more of your player characters will go temporarily, indefinitely, or permanently insane. And one of the things that happens when they go insane is they suffer a bout of madness. So what I wanted to do was have a table that the players could roll on and determine what the effect of that bout of madness was. Let's see how to set that up. So the first thing I did was created a table called Bout of Madness and made sure that the players could roll on that table. And then here, these are all the effects that the player character may suffer if they go mad. With that done, what we want to do is start building the macro. And the first part of that is to actually roll on that table. So the syntax for that is going to look like this, where we have a set of double brackets, one T, and then another bracket, and the name of the table. And then we have closing brackets for each of those open brackets that we have. So this is telling Roll20 to roll on the Bout of Madness table, and it's going to spit back what it finds. So let's go ahead, let's copy this and run that just as it is. And we see, there we go, the investigator faints recovering after 1d10 rounds. Okay, great. But now we want to format that roll so that it looks like the other rolls coming from the Call of Cthulhu character sheet. And so again, I'm just going to paste in the code for that. It's going to look very similar to what we did with the mystery roll. We've got our Call of Cthulhu template, 
The name will be Bout of Madness, the title will be Madness Gained, and then just like before, we're going to put the role that we created inside of a role section here with again, two closing curly braces. And now I can copy this and I can paste it in and there we are, Madness Gained. Now, if you have a pro account, we can use a mod to shrink the text a little bit and also make that die roll automatically. So where it says 1d10, I could have it just roll a d10 and it would say that they were suffering from this effect for three rounds instead of 1d10 rounds. So let me show you what mod you'll need and what we're going to do to the macro in order to make it work. But again, you do need a pro account in order to do this next part. So what you're going to want to do is go into your game's settings page, go to your mod library, and the mod that you're looking for is called Recursive Table. It's part of Roll20's mod library. You can just click in this field, start typing Recursive Table, you'll find it, add it to your game, and then you'll be able to use it. Now, quick shout out of thanks to this script's author, the Aaron, the Arcane Scriptomancer himself. Aaron, thank you as always for everything you do for the community. But once we have this recursive table mod installed, we can go back into our game, back into our macro, and all we're gonna do is add exclamation point RT to the beginning of the macro. That's the only change we're gonna make. So now I'm gonna copy this and run it again. And now you can see that the text is much smaller. It looks a lot cleaner. And this next three rounds, this was a die roll coming from the table. So the recursive table script helps format the macros output more cleanly and will handle any inline die rolls. So just so you can see what this looks like, if I go back into the table here and we see that I have the this lasts for bracket bracket 1d10 rounds, recursive table is actually turning that into a die roll for me so that we get the automatic calculation and we know exactly how long this is gonna last. We don't have to stop and do a second roll after we've determined the bout of madness that the investigator gained. And of course, the final step here is just like before when we made the mystery roll to create a macro called madness. I have that exact same code right in here. Again, I'm showing it as a token action and it's visible for all players. So now when my players do go mad, they can click on this button right here and it will roll on the table for them. The final macro I wanted to create was one that would allow my players to generate luck for their characters. In Call of Cthulhu, luck is a resource that can be spent in order to alter the outcome of a die roll. And each player character starts out with 3d6 times 5 luck points. So I wanted to make a macro that would generate that luck for each of my player characters. So to start things out, we need that 3d6 times 5 roll that I mentioned, and that just looks like this, where we have our open brackets 3d6 times 5 and then the closing brackets and if I were to run that right now we can see boom there we go we got a 75 we rolled 3d6 and multiplied the result of that by 5. Fantastic and just like before now we want to put that into the Call of Cthulhu role template so that it looks like the rest of the roles coming from the Call of Cthulhu character sheet. That's going to look very similar to what we did previously I'm just going to paste in some code here again our Call of Cthulhu template with the name generate luck we're going to have it titled as luck roll and then the closing braces for our roll and now if I were to run this there we go we see we have generated luck and our luck roll was 30. Now this macro works great just as it is you could have your players run that and then update their character sheets with the new luck value that they just rolled but Again, if you have a pro account, there is a mod that we can use to automatically update the character sheet with that value that we just rolled. So let's see how to do that. So what you want to do is go back to your game settings page, back to the mod library, and the mod you're looking for is called Chat Set Atra. And I've already got it installed in my game. Quick shout out of thanks to Chat Set Atra's author, Jacob. Jacob, this is an awesome, awesome mod. I use it in almost all my games. And what Chat Set Atra is going to do is allow us to update values on our player's character sheet. So once we've got Chat Set Atra installed in our game, let's jump back into our game here and back into our macro. And again, I'm just going to paste in some code and then I'll explain what the code does. So immediately before the roll here, I'm going to paste in this code. And so this exclamation point set atra means that we are setting an attribute on the character sheet. 
The silent means that we're not displaying anything in chat when we change the value of this attribute. And then the character ID is how we specify which character we are updating. And the way we tell who it is is with this at selected character ID. So what's going to happen is our player will click on their token when they run this macro and that will generate the luck and add it to their sheet. Now, this next part, dash dash luck, that's saying which attribute on the character sheet are we updating. And then this pipe says we're going to take this roll, this 3d6 times 5, and we're going to set that to be the luck value. And then lastly, we need to go to the end of the line here, and we have to put in three exclamation points. That tells chat set Atra that there are no more rolls left to process. If you leave those three exclamation points off, the command will not work. So what we're going to do now is copy all this and we'll paste it into our chat. I'm going to select my character's token first, make sure we've got that done, and I'm going to press enter. Here we go. All right, so we just rolled a luck roll of 35, and you notice this number on the far left here updated. That's my character's luck. If I open up his character sheet real quick, we'll just alt double click on this to bring him up. You can see now that he has 35 luck. If I do it again... We can see now he has 65 luck. Now you may be wondering how I knew what the name of the attribute was that I wanted to update. So if you hover over a field on the character sheet, like you see right here, it just pops up as luck. I knew it was called luck. From here, you can just go into your macros tab and create the generate luck macro. And again, this is the exact same code as what we had in the notepad window. And while I have this visible to all players, the difference is I didn't set this one as a token action. The reason being was I didn't want my players to accidentally click on that button while we were in the middle of the game. So what I had them do instead was just at the beginning of the session, click on the macros tab, and then they could click on generate luck that one time. And then we left the macros tab and there was no chance that they could accidentally click that button going forward. So there you have it. That's how you can create some macros for your Call of Cthulhu scenarios in Roll20. I want to give a quick shout out of thanks to all my patrons. Thank you all so much for your support. It really does mean a lot to me. And I also want to give a shout out of thanks again to the Aaron and to Jacob for building the recursive table mod and the chat set Atra mod. Those are really beneficial, really helpful, and thank you folks so much for doing that. And thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.